My name is Kathleen Serraza. I'm a graduate student at Wayne State, went to Michigan Tech, if you guys know where that is. And I'm the event supervisor for Crime Busters. Um, so basically this event or this session is for you guys to ask me questions so that we can clear up any confusions you have on rules. I can go over the rules or how an event works at any point too if you feel that's useful. But really the event is yours. So any questions, have at it. About, about the supplies. We ran out of the flour for the, for mm -hmm. the material. So what should we buy to replace them? So flour, which flour do you need? There is a replenishment kit. I don't know if they're selling it there right now, but um, I'm pretty sure there's some way you can order online or and you can pick it up or it'll be shipped to you. For so. example, the sugar. The sugar looks different. There's so many kinds of sugar. So what kind of sugar should you buy? So the replenishment kit will have the exact sugars, flour, whatever powders can be at the event um, that you can purchase. So don't purchase on your own. You can have replenishment kits Purchase through Science Olympiad. Well, you could grab a sheet and then say anywhere you want. Those two people are not allowed to do it. And for those that don't know, there is a startup kit that you can purchase today. Um, I'm not super sure about the price, they'll tell you there, but It'll have all the materials that'll be characteristic of what you'll see at the event. For instance, there'll be the item. Um, you can make fingerprints. As well as there's uh, seven or eight tubs of powder, tiny tubs. They're about this size that are labeled with the powder that you'll have, as well as some droppers, chromatography paper, black paper. <coughs> Feel free to um, look at this kit if you want to know what's in it after the session. There can be. It's not certain right now, but um, you should expect the same format at least. So there will be a zip grade sheet, which is like Scantron. Seven questions will be answered on the Scantron that will be provided to them. And there will also be the answer sheet that will be provided to them as well, along with a packet that contains um, background information of what crime was committed, as well as any prints. Uh, and the uh, unspecified evidence. So that'll be provided to them. So they're going to stay at one station. They will not rotate. They'll be at their one table, as yes. always. And so they'll have their grade, and there'll be like seven questions, one for each part, where they'll indicate in powders, which one or two suspects, versus prints, the different three types of prints. They'll highlight, like, on the grade, right? Like, one or two suspects. But will they fill in, like, suspect A and B? Two different bubbles, or will it be A and B? So it might be better if I just show you a sample sheet. So the sample sheet and a lot of good info can be found on the Crime Busters webpage. And basically, to find that, you just Google Science Olympiad Macomb, and it should be one of the um, few links that pop up. If I do that right now. Really, there should be a bunch of links that pop up, but for some reason, the formatting here is different. But once you get onto the home page, you'll see this. And make sure you click on elementary first, because there's elementary and then there's stuff for middle and high school. Then to get to the Crime Busters page, you'll go to 2020 Events and Rules. Look for Crime Busters. And then you'll end up at uh, the website. And right here is a sample answer sheet. So at the top, you can expect some um, background on what crime was committed, crime backstory. After, um, they'll be asked to circle what powders are in each of the cups that are provided to, the, to them full of powder. Then they'll um, state which a uh, portion of the chromatography paper matches the ink found at the crime.
crime scene. Then this is where the zip grade questions come in, where they'll answer the questions based on what they found from the powders as well as the prints and the um, chromatography. And they'll put that on the Scantron. Um, it's basically a bubble in for each question. So it'll be A through E. They'll pick which uh, answer best fits what they found from the powders and whatnot. And then at the end, there's going to be the tiebreaker questions where um, they'll answer whatever is on the actual uh, packet. They'll be listed somewhere in tiebreaker questions. I do recommend they answer the questions that are required of them to the best of their ability first to gain max points. And after, if they have time, then um, they can answer the tiebreaker questions. So does that help? Yeah, so you're going to write your tiebreaker questions. It's going to be on your written. It's going to be written here. Right. So, you're gonna, so when we instruct our, our students, they're, they're going to basically go between. They're going to have some zip grade, the 1 through 7 zip grade, where mm -hmm. they'll, if it's if suspects A and B are both implicated in chromatography, you fill in both bubbles. Correct? For number seven, yes. If it's two suspects, they do A and B. Right. There's not going to be like uh, A and B fill in bubble one. It's going to be no. A and B. Yes. They're playing two bubbles. Okay. Just making sure. Yep. And then instruct them to write their tiebreaking questions in that box. Yes. Okay. Got it. And this is just placeholder. There all might be like a space for them to answer. Okay. Might not be in a box. It's but just it's here so you know where it is. Yeah, got it. Are you able to tell us what the unspecified evidence was from last year? I know you can't tell us this year, but from last year what it was? Off the top of my head, I can't remember, okay. but um, yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head, but really it could be anything. I know it's like very vague, yeah. but it's meant to like, um, well, basically break the tie. Uh, the questions might be a bit more difficult because tiebreaker, that means that, I mean, two teams are pretty on par, so to try and like um, get first and second place uh, assigned better, there might be a bit more involved. So, yeah, sorry. That's okay. If that question is asked online, can we get that answer for those of us that hadn't had students in this event last year? So if the question's asked, it can, can be answer? answered, but uh, maybe not as specifically. Like, they might not be able to tell you like what are past and uh, past questions. But I mean, you can always ask. It's always good to ask. There's a question. What are some examples in the past where you've seen a team make a mistake in the beginning that's just been kind of tragic? So this is my first year heading the event. Last okay. year I was a volunteer. Um, there was one group that uh, came in and they actually didn't know anything about how the event works. So that was not tragic per se, but it was just unfortunate because you know, this is supposed to be fun for the kids and if they don't know what they're doing, it might be kind of scary. So it's best to go over the rules with them so they have some idea of what to expect. The practice kits will have them practice how to analyze the powders how to do chromatography. There's some videos online that will show you how to do the chromatography, and I'm not sure if there's stuff for powders and uh, fingerprint analysis, but the idea is to get them into the sense of how this event will be run. If you want, I can go over how the uh, uh, event will go after a few more questions. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say because um, this year is my daughter's first year, and yeah. we have no clue. Uh, what to do or where to start. Right. We have the uh, the kit box, I believe, from her school provided it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like sitting because we don't know where to start. You know, so I was just wondering if you have, you know, or give me tips on where to start and what to do first. Right. And I think it might be best if I just like go through a scenario of how uh, the event will work, how to approach each section. So if that's cool, then I'll do that. But if you have any questions about like, uh, 
greater than you or anything, you can answer. You can ask before, and I'll answer. But feel free to just raise your hand at any time too while I'm talking. While you do that, can you just go over really um, kind of concretely what are they going to turn in? My daughter's in third grade, so I'm really concerned she's going to turn in not like I, is it a packet? Is it staple? Because she'll have her zip grade, the tiebreaker questions, and then there was a powder thing where you circle the powders. Yeah. So that all needs to be turned in, correct? Yes. Along with the chromatography paper. So it's going to be, I mean, the paper won't be stapled, but will all of that be stapled? It will be stapled by either me or one of my helpers. Okay. Okay. They're allowed to ask questions if they're just not sure, like, what the next step is. I mean, they're offered assistance, like, to make sure that they do fill out everything that they're supposed to, right? So they can ask questions if they're confused, or um, they can probably ask, like, did I fill out everything right? And we can clarify. We just can't tell them any, like, answers. No, of course. So. Wouldn't expect that. But just to make sure that they are thorough and complete right. in answering everything that they're required to answer. Yeah, they can ask questions. Because we're here at the event to help them with any um, confusions about what's going on while they're doing stuff or to ask for more supplies. So. so I'll start going through the event, if that's OK. Yep. So an event is 30 minutes, approximately. And keep in mind that within those approximate 30 minutes, there will be a few minutes to explain the backstory of the crime, as well as uh, what's provided to them. And it will be stated what they need to turn in. We'll also go over safety, because safety is a big concern, especially since this is one of our more chemistry-based um, events. Make sure that your students have splash-proof goggles, so the ones that enclose uh, around their eyes. And they should be big enough to uh, fit over glasses that are big or small. You can find these at, I found at Home Depot and Harbor Freights. They're pretty cheap. Uh, three to four dollars for one or a pack of three for about four dollars at Harbor Freight. So if you want to save a few bucks while still being safe, that's cool. Well, you should have the goggles regardless though. If your students don't have the goggles, then you might not be allowed to uh, allow them to participate in the event just because, I mean, they don't have eye protection. So make sure they have that. Also, they can bring an 8x5 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper with notes front and back, as well as a magnifying glass. And make sure they have writing utensils. So pen or, pen or pencil are fine. Make sure they have so they can fill out their um, papers accordingly. Question or OK. And I'll have to clarify this, but when we get to chromatography, um, they might need a pencil of their own. I don't remember if it was provided to them or if they have to use their own pencil. But I'll get to that later. For now, let's go to what's provided to them. Uh, there will be a zip grade form and the uh, sample answer sheet, as well as uh, a list of the possible powders. They'll be given liquids such as tap water, vinegar, iodine, to test the powders, as well as plastic cups, spoons, toothpicks, black paper, um, and then the materials for the chromatogram, which is the chromatography paper, that's already marked with the different ink samples, as well as isopropyl alcohol in a cup. When it comes to the powders, uh, they're going to have to basically characterize the powders on how they react with the different liquids available to them, the vinegar, iodine, and water as well as their physical appearance. So that's where the magnifying glass comes in handy. Um, <clears throat> in order to test them, it's best to use either the plastic cups provided to them and the black sheet of paper to um, see basically how they look, how they react to the liquids. And keep in mind that the powders given to them are in limited supplies. So they should use small portions of powders from each cup, test them, they need more, they use sparingly because um, there's not like an abundance. There's enough for everyone in the event, but they should ration out their powders. So again, that's where the toothpicks, black paper, spoons, and the liquids come in handy. 
and then they'll answer accordingly on the sheet in that chart. They'll have to circle what powders are in each cup. And then when it comes to the chromatography, they'll be provided, again, the chromatography paper. And there's going to be, um, might be better. So the chromatography paper, the way it works is that there's going to be the ink found at the crime scene, and then ink provided by the suspects that are uh, for the investigation. And there's going to be a dot of each ink sample close to the bottom of the chromatography paper. Um, I'm not sure if there's a line, but in chromatography, there's a line you must draw that must align with the surface of the isopropyl alcohol in the cup. If you dip your chromatography paper in further, you might screw up your um, chromatogram because the idea is, is that the alcohol um, through capillary action travels up the chromatography paper. And if you saturate your ink samples, then it might just go in the stock alcohol instead of traveling up to see which suspect's ink sample matches the um, ink found at the scene. So make sure that the line at the bottom of the chromatography paper matches to the surface of the isopropyl alcohol. If they need more alcohol, they just raise their hand and we'll put in more alcohol until they deem fit. Uh, for chromatography, so, is that? Do you have an example to show? I mean, you kind of explained the details as to how much you need to dip and take it out, but if you can visually show to us, maybe it's more easier to understand. Um, I can draw on the board, yeah, but maybe. I'm not sure if everyone can see, but it's probably the best we have now. Will, uh, will we be able to go online? Will, are there examples online? Yes, um, there's the videos online. online. Um, especially for chromatography, because this is kind of confusing. So, if we go through this somewhat quickly, I don't know if everyone can see, kind of see, yeah? So, the idea is, is that there's different, I guess, rows that are made by the dots of the ink. Let's say the dot to the left is going to be your suspects, and then I'm sorry, the dot to the left is whatever is found at the crime scene, so that's evidence. And then there's going to be dots provided by the suspects in terms of what ink they had on them. And then there's going to be a line at the bottom. I don't know if that's drawn or if your students have to establish that, but the idea is, is that this line, when you put the chromatography paper in the isopropyl alcohol cup, this line should match with the line that the that establishes how much alcohol is in the cup. If it goes too low, then you risk saturating the ink samples and putting it into the alcohol instead of having it travel up. Because when you have the line aligned with the surface of the alcohol, you'll find that some ink samples will travel farther than others. And if the samples, uh, if the evidence evidence sample matches one, you'll know that suspect two matches whatever is found at the crime scene. So there should be a portion also where they should stop the um, dipping of the chromatography paper in the alcohol. So if you make a line up there, once you see that uh, this portion of the chromatography paper is wet, take it out, let it dry, and analyze. I don't know if that helps. Was that somewhat useful? Yes. So basically, cool. don't go, don't go above the line. Right? Yes. More yeah, questions. Alcohol in the cup. You take your control, or you're just indicating there's an imaginary line. You don't want the alcohol to actually touch the ink because it will wash it away. You can draw a line with pencil. I Do don't. You, have to? you don't have to. Just make sure that your ink samples aren't below. Touching the alcohol. Yeah. Right. So that helped? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Are there any more questions on chromatography? Ah, and this is, sorry, no worries. So this is where the whole pencil debacle comes in. I don't remember if they have to use their own pencil, but the idea is, is that at the top of the chromatography paper, there should be a hole made that allows you to balance the chromatography paper 
on top of the cup. That prevents it from going below the line. So right. um, it'll be posted one way or another whether or not they have to use their own pencil. If so, it might be good to bring multiple pencils. Questions? That was the question. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Can I keep on going? Yes. Is there a time limit for either one of them? For Sorry? example, let's say for the powders, right? We said the duration is about 30 minutes. Yes. So for the powders, let's say the kids take 10 minutes. Yep. Is that okay or is there a limit for every section to be done in a time? They can do it in any order they want to. Okay. If there is a group of two, they can split up the work and they can check each other's work. Just depends on what uh, is the best strategy for your team. In terms of prints, they'll be provided fingerprints, footprints, or shoe prints, and tire prints from the five suspects. And uh, I will do my best to make sure that they print clearly. The magnifying glass can come in handy for this, but also they can look, compare what was found at the scene versus what's provided by the suspects. So in that case, magnifying glass can or can't be useful, depends on your students. And we can use partial or, or obscured prints. So by obscured, it could be like it's not um, fingerprint made with ink. It could be like within clay or something. It really depends on what's thrown at them at the time. In terms of unspecified evidence, that's the wild card. And I don't really know the best strategy for preparing for this too, because <coughs> I mean, it can really be anything in the past, I've seen uh, pictures of fibers that they have to compare. Um, I think maybe there was also an instance where DNA was uh, ob obtained and they had to compare the different nucleotides. Really depends. Uh, at the end, though, they'll identify uh, what yeah. criminals are, well, sorry, uh, what suspects actually committed the crime. So. All portions of the test are leading up to identifying the suspects. There can be one or two. So just keep that in mind. There might be more than one answer. In terms of grading, um, <clears throat> you have to correctly identify the powders and um, make a neat, clear chromatogram. So that's where this method comes in. Look online for the um, video as well. And identifying the criminals and matching all the evidence to the suspects. They'll be docked down if they um, identify powders incorrectly or they identify suspects or criminals uh, incorrectly, half point off per extra answer. So for instance, if in cup A we have salt but they say sugar, they get docked down. If in cup A they say uh, there's salt and sugar when there's really salt only, they'll be docked down for that too. Also, if the chromatogram is incomplete, as in like you don't get the separation of the inks or if it's missing or messy, there'll be back down points for that as well. Um, if there's a tie for first place, that's where the tiebreaker questions come in. But again, keep in mind that it's uh, much better to answer the required questions as best as they can before the tiebreaker. So. I'll go here and then there. Could you say, I don't remember correctly, that if, could they get more powder or are they limited to what's in their stations? They're limited to what's at their stations. So if they run out, they run out, which is why you should ration accordingly. Yes, but in most cases, if it's dry, they could probably scoop. If it's mixed, though, then that's an issue. So, question over here? Yeah, um, is there a method, whether it be time management, whether it be other disciplines that you noticed, I know you said this is first year, but you volunteered in the past, that you noticed between those first place teams? So I found that divide and conquer works really well. So like one student might go for the powders while the other starts the chromatogram, and then they go towards the prints, for instance. Um, that would be an excellent form of time management. Um, we could also do things together, like they could split, like, okay, you get these powders and I get these powders. It just really depends on what works for your students, because, I mean, every student is different. Um, we'll try and give them as much time within the 30-ish minutes, because I know some time is lost with explaining, 
but after time is called, they can't work on things anymore. Another thing, make sure that your students write their names in schools because uh, it's very difficult if one um, packet is turned in and there's no name on it. Also, um, I think it might be a good idea to write the name on the very top of the chromatogram. So if it's lost, at least we know whose it is. Um, it will turn in the zip grade form, which is the Scantron, as well as the answer sheet and their chromatogram. So those three should be turned in. Otherwise, like the materials uh, for prints and the list of powders that could be there, they don't turn that in. So. Yeah, and there will be a stapler there. It doesn't matter if you use pen or pencil because the zip grade's just hand marked. Uh, it's there mostly for the students' convenience, so they can just bubble in whatever the seven questions are instead of like writing it out. 